Amen. I'm going to invite you to have a seat and uh, take your Bibles, your Bible app, and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 is our text for the day. It's been our text for the series. And if you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1,158, and you will find Galatians chapter 5. And as always, if you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please take one of those with you. It's our gift to you. We want you to have the Word of God, read the Word of God, because we know if you do that, God will change your life. Uh, so Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the Apostle Paul writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things... There is no law. Now, we've been in this text for nine weeks, so a lot of you should know that by now. I know some of you just got back from, from traveling, and you, that's the first time you've heard it. But, but uh, let's just try and say it together. So close your Bible, stick your finger there, keep the place marked, turn your phones over, whatever you're looking at, and say it with me if you can. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. By the way, you guys did it better than all the other services. I just got to tell you that. So good job. Good job. Way to go. I actually have a really great way to remember that. You do. Have you ever heard the Fruit of the Spirit song? The Fruit of the Spirit yes. song. Somebody yes, out here has heard have. it. Yes, you have. I have heard it because we've I had three services you, before. Yes. Please. Go it's ahead. It's so good. It goes like this. You guys like want to hear her sing? I'll do my best. Sing it with her if you know. Okay. It goes like this. The Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. It can't be the fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They're looking at me funny, <laughs> and I'm not sure why. Oh, you like it. Uh, it it's, a, it's a catchy song. Yeah. I, I, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I tried to learn it last night, and I tried <laughs> singing it. I couldn't get the cadence to work out, so my, yeah, I'm rhythmically challenged, and that's just part of it. <laughs> hey, we're wrapping up our series on Character 101, talking about self-control. It's the last of the fruit of the Spirit. I think it's everybody's favorite fruit of the Spirit, oh, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, how many of you believe that there's some part of your life where you need more self-control? Oh, look, everybody's hand goes up. Uh, okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you, to, you know, confession is good for the soul. So I want you to take a moment. And uh, with the people around you, I want you to name one area of your life that you would like God to teach you more self-control in. So you have 10 seconds to do this. Ready, set, go. Wow, they're quiet. <laughs> they're stunned. They're like, I don't want to tell them this. I don't want to admit this. One area you need more self-control in. Okay, so they're... They're, they're kind of, it's dying out really quietly. <laughs> Awkward conversation. Yeah, they're like, n make no eye contact. No eye contact. <laughs> Let's pretend like we didn't hear him. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right, so I asked you to do it, so I'm going to do it. So one of the areas that I need more self-control in is with food, okay? I'll just say it, and especially when it comes to pizza. I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I order, you know, a large pizza because I like pizza a lot. And, uh, and I think I'm going to have a couple of slices. <laughs> And then I look down, and half of it's gone, and I go, all right, two more slices. Why not? <laughs> and then I look at it, and honestly, I go, I could eat the whole thing, but then what would I have for breakfast? So uh, That's gross. Do you really you eat know, cold pizza? I, I had pizza for breakfast really? this morning. No. I did. So I'm, t I'm oh, just confessing really what happened like yesterday. So, <laughs> so what about you, Julie? Um, I think the area that I need to work the most in with self-control is not laughing at people when they fall. <laughs> Inappropriate laughter, huh? Oh, it's bad. When I see somebody biff, it's like there's no stopping me. There's nothing. My, my kid let, fell last week with his suitcase toppling over him in the airport. And I, right away, I'm like, ah. <laughs> and there's people around going, oh, are you okay? And then I'm like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> it's just a bad thing. I, I always thought that was kind of like the trait of wives. So, uh, Does your wife laugh at yes, you a lot? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she always thinks that she asks if I'm okay first, but she doesn't. Uh, it's, just, it's just laughter. So difficult. So, so let's talk about self-control, because we all know that we need it, but let's begin by defining it. Self-control defined, because if we want God to teach us this, and by the way, the Holy Spirit is committed to teaching us self-control, 
we need to talk about what it actually is. So I boiled it down to just the, the simplest definition that I could think of, that I could figure out. And here's what, the, the, if you're going to talk about self-control, it's deciding to do what is right when you want to do what is wrong. Okay, we have these impulses, we have these urges, we have these desires that we know it's wrong to eat more pizza, to laugh at people, you know, when they've hurt themselves. Uh, but we decide to do what is right instead. That's what self-control looks like. And, and, the, and the thing that drives me crazy is we all want more self-control. We all know the stuff that's right to do. Why is it so hard to do what's right? Well, because we all face a dilemma, and it speaks about it in Galatians 5, 16 through 17. In the New Living Translation, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting with each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Sawyer and I started taking, taking Taekwondo a few uh, months ago. And um, I'm going to show you just... I'm totally a professional with these things. I'm not going to give you a reason drums. to laugh. <laughs> so, um... See? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and it is... Taekwondo is a form of self-defense, and it focuses very heavily on self-discipline and self-control, if you can imagine. And I actually brought my son here that's taking Taekwondo with me. Sawyer, come on out. Hello. And then we also have our instructor, Mr. Landoni, coming out. He is the barefoot drummer that you might see up here from time to time. And then we also have my daughter, Layla. She's coming up to join here for emotional support. What do you have? <laughs> Layla Rose is the first aid kit. Um, why do you think we're going to need that? I hope not. Okay, so do you guys want to see some of our taekwondo -ing? Okay, so Mr. Landoni can come on up. Hi, sir. Hello. And um, Sawyer's been working on an elbow strike. So we're going to watch him do an elbow strike. And yes, this is real wood. These are real boards. And uh, you guys, do you want to cheer him on? Let's say, break that board. Break that board. Break that board. Break that. Yeah. Good job. Good job, Sawyer. Can I break one? <laughs> one. You guys want to see Julie okay. break a board? <laughs> so <laughs> this, I'm going to use what's called a hammer fist. So everybody watch out. <laughs> Okay. Set. Set. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Come up, sit down. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Sawyer. And Layla, I might need to use that in a little after service. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can take me, too. Thank you. Everybody give my family a round of applause. Oh. So, yes. Taekwondo, you need self-control because we learn how to hurt people very badly if they're coming at us out of self-defense. So we need to use that self-control if we're angry or losing our temper. If we don't lose our self-control, we're out. And it, when it comes down to self-control, we're all in this battle, and we have a very, very important decision to make. So let's talk about the decision. Because uh, it, it, as Julie shared, the battle's going on inside of us, and every one of us has these impulses, these urges that are connected to our sinful nature. And, and the reality is that sinful nature is going to be with us as long as we draw breath in this world. Okay, we can't get rid of it. Uh, we get new bodies in heaven, so we don't have that sinful nature. But right now the sinful nature is there. And if you're a follower of Jesus, then the spirit is in you and they're doing battle in your life every single day. And so we have to make a decision to do what is right. Uh, Jesus talked about this in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He's talking to his followers, and he says this, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and come follow me. And so if you want to know what self-control looks like in, in its reality, it is really boiled down to this. Deny self, follow Jesus. If we're going to exercise self-control, then it means that we deny self and we follow Jesus. Deny self and follow Jesus. That's catchy, isn't it? Deny self, follow Jesus. Deny self, follow 
Do you want to turn it into a cheer? Yeah, I think I like that. I know well, there's some cheerleaders. If we're going to do uh, a cheer, then uh, you have to lead it because yeah, I'm okay, not a cheerleader. That's fine. I was a cheerleader for a year <laughs> until I got kicked out. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're going to put on a cheer here. The outside sections, you're going to say deny self and the, the inner middle section. <laughs> the middle inner section. section. <laughs> the center. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> the, the center section is going to say follow Jesus, okay? Okay, you so got that? deny self, follow Jesus. We're going to say it three times. Okay, follow. outside section, you're with me. Here we go. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Deny self. Follow Jesus. Deny self. Follow Jesus. Deny self. Follow Jesus. They're wow. okay. You know, I thought 11 o'clock would be awake. I know. I thought They're there would hungry. be some energy in it. I thought there'd be a lot of excitement in yeah. it. Uh, where's the commitment? You guys, first of all, you can't cheer sitting down, right? I can't believe nobody jumped up anyway. Where are yeah, these cheerleaders in this place? Up. So let's stand up. Yeah. Let's try this one more time like we mean Ready? it this time. Okay. I realize it may not be pleasant to deny yourself, but this is what Jesus calls us to. So let's try it again three times. Okay. And I want to see which section is the loudest. Okay. One, two, three. Here we go. Deny. Deny. All right. Oh, way better. Jesus. Way better. Give yourselves a hand. Julie says sit down. <laughs> they seemed hesitant. The yeah, that. they did seem they a little did. hesitant. I think they wanted more cheers. Yeah. So, uh, here's, the, here's the reality that, that if we're going to do this, if we're going to uh, you know, be able to, to be people who are self-controlled, who deny ourselves and follow Jesus, then we need to understand that if you want to win, you have to practice self-control. If you want to win then you have to practice self-control. The Apostle Paul tells us this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, beginning at verse 24 to the end of the chapter. This is a chapter I'd encourage you to go home and read uh, tonight, sometime this week. Kind of let the Spirit speak to you out of these words. But the very end, listen to this. And boys and girls, there's stuff in here for you as well. He says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Run to win the prize. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we do it to receive an imperishable prize. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. So if you want to win, you have to practice Self-control. How many athletes do we have in this room? Okay, a lot of hands go up. All right, so boys and girls, let me, if you, are you in a sport right now? I want you to stand up. Okay, if you're in a sport, if you do football, baseball, basketball, gymnastics, swimming, uh, tennis, uh, soccer, you know, whatever. I don't have to name the sport. Taekwondo. You know, all the old people can stand up too if they want. I don't care. Okay, so they stand. Okay, boys and girls, how many times a week? I want you to shout this out on the count of three. How many times a week do you practice your sport? Ready? One, two, three. Okay, five days. She said that like it hurt. Five <laughs> days. Okay, how many times a week do you compete? One, two, three. Whoa, five. Ten. <laughs> Ten days a week. Okay, that's good. <laughs> We're going to talk about math in a minute. Okay, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. Here's the reality. You have to practice more than you compete if you're going to win. How many boys and girls want to win when you, when you play your games? Okay. Any, anybody say, I want to practice really hard so I can lose? <laughs> no, you don't like losing. I don't like losing. You want to win. And, and here's, the, here's the truth. If you want to win in life, practice self-control. If you want to lose in life, then just follow the impulses of the sinful nature and do the stuff that you know is wrong. Because that's a sure way to lose. And the way I, I think of it this way is you have to lose the moment so you can win the life. Lose the moments you can win life. Uh, because in the moment, your impulse, your sinful nature says, do it. Cheat. You know, do, do whatever it is that, that, that you know is wrong. And, and if you lose that moment and say, no, I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to follow Jesus. You're going to win life. Because there's a lot of things that are really tempting to do that will cause us to lose over and over and over again. Such as? Throwing temper tantrums and being angry all the time. If you want to lose, throw them all the time and just lose your anger constantly. If you live or have ever known a two, a two or three-year-old, raise your hand. Do you know where this is going? 
Um, when they lose their temper and throw their temper tantrums, you all lose. Sometimes for more than like five or ten minutes. It's, it's gnarly. The older you get, the more you lose when you have temper tantrums. When you're two or three and you lose your temper, you might lose your favorite sippy cup or time with Mickey Mouse Playhouse Clubhouse on the, on the TV. Um, when you grow up and you're an older child, you might lose your temper and lose your phone or screen time, screen time friend time. When you're an adult and you lose your temper, you lose much more than that. You lose respect. Some of you might lose your job. Some may even lose their families and relationships. It's okay to have these feels of being angry. It's just not okay to act on them. And not acting on them takes a whole lot of self-control. Okay, so if losing your, your temper is a loss, another loss is just being stupid and getting drunk. Um, you know, people don't do bright things when they're inebriated. Uh, and there's a lot of losses that go with that. Uh, again, loss of self-respect, uh, loss of reputation. Uh, sometimes you get a DUI, so you lose some freedom, your ability to drive. Uh, there, sometimes you lose your families. Uh, you can even lose your life. Uh, so that's just a loss, uh, and we need to be aware of that. Another loss is using hurtful words. When I hear hurtful words, I think of a toothpaste tube. After you squeeze out all the toothpaste, can you put it back in? No, no, you have a mess to you clean could up. go home and try it, but no. It's not if you, work. Okay, if you do go home and try this and you can put all the toothpaste back in, let me know. <laughs> um, but once it's out, it's out, just like hurtful words, and it's a mess to clean up. It, you have to ask yourself this question when you're using self-control. Are, are the words that are coming out of my mouth hurtful or helpful to those that I'm speaking them to? Hmm. Another loss is breaking your marriage vows. Being unfaithful, cheating, committing adultery, whatever you want to call it, our society is getting more and more comfortable with this concept that it's okay. And, and, and that is completely a uh, sinful nature urge or impulse that, that you have. Oh, you know, it's, uh, I'm going to get away with it, uh, uh, so I'm going to cheat. And, and the reality is it's always a loss because you lose in your own self-respect, but you're also going to lose a relationship with your spouse. You're going to lose your family and there's going to be destruction every way that you look. Uh, it's always a loss. It's never a win. Be faithful. Another loss is lying and stealing. Raise your hand if you've ever lied. And then those of you that are not raising your hand, you can raise your hand now because you're lying. <laughs> Studies show that by age 2, 20% of 2-year-olds will lie. By the age of 3, 50% of those will lie. And close to 90% of kids lie at the age of four. Oh, this is not very hopeful, is it? Hey, when, when does it peak? When's the well, worst? What's the, the, what's the least truthful age, according well, to this study? I'm going to see if they actually know this. Oh, okay. It, it, say out loud what you think the age is for the most deceitful um, age of a child. I haven't heard it yet. 12. <laughs> it's 12. Do you have a 12-year-old or no? Because that would be really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Do you guys want to raise your hand if you're 12? Yeah? No? <laughs> Put it down. There, there's hope, though, because studies show by the age of 16, the, the percentages start going down. Hopefully, we are not part of those statistics and we use self-control to not lie. But guys, lying is going to make us lose, and this is what the Bible says. Proverbs 13, 5 says, The righteous hate what is false but the wicked may make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. Uh, Proverbs 28, 26, 28 says, A tongue that tells lies hates the people that it hurts, and words that seem to praise you destroy you. Mm. Oh, yikes. Another loss is just buy everything that you want. When you want it. Don't wait for it. Don't delay the gratification. You got some credit. You got the, just, just pay for it. Commit to it, and you'll dig a hole that it hurts to get out of. See, wins and losses. If we want to win, we've got to practice self-control. So let me ask you this. Who wants to win in life? Who wants to be a winner? Okay. Everybody raise their hand. Is there anybody who really is committed to losing at life? You just really want to be a, 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 okay, I didn't see any hands. You see, we want to win. So if you want to win, then you have to practice what? Self-control. Self-control. Yeah, if you want to win, practice self-control. Now, we understand it's a battle. There, there's a, a, a person inside of you, this flesh inside of you, that wants to do evil, that wants to do the things that are wrong. You're a follower of Christ. You say, okay, I want to decide to do what's right. It's a battle that's going on. You've got to make the decision to deny yourself or follow Jesus. 
And what we want to do is get really practical here for a few minutes, kind of brutally practical, if you will, because um, we know that we got to practice self-control. So we're going to give you some challenges for the next seven days. And, uh, and, and we're just going to get really blunt. Then some of the kids are directed at kids and some are directed at adults. So listen to them and see where God would have you to practice some more self-control. So self-control looks different at every age. From ages two to six, self-control looks like making good choices. You'll hear that a lot from moms. Make a good choice. It doesn't stop there at age seven to 13. It looks like taking control of your behavior. And then 14 and older, self-control looks like the ability to see, choose, and do the right thing. Um, kids, you're going to love me right now, but there is, there is a practical tip in practicing self-control. And one of, the, one of the ways is to have chores and responsibilities at home. Don't leave and listen to me, okay? And I love you very much. You guys know, if, if you're close to me, you know I am not super mom. I do not have all the answers or a perfect life by any means. But I do have Pinterest. You know, <laughs> that place that you go and you plan your perfect wedding that you're not having and dress the children that you don't have. You can also find really great chore, chore ideas. And that's where I found ours that we use at our house that works for ours. And I just wanted to share with you this idea. Um, you can get different color circle magnets. Get a one uh, a dollar tree um, pan and stick the magnets to this pan. Every color can be a different challenge of chore. The harder colors are a different color and the easy ones are the little. So like the easy ones could be like five cents and the bigger ones could be like quarter a dollar, whatever you do. We put all the chores on, our, on this board, and at the beginning of the week, the kids have to pick seven of these chores and put it on their chore board. And every time they complete one, they move it down. At the end of the week, they bank out, and it's really great. And it works for us, but there's all different ideas wow, for chores. Wow, you are such a nice parent. Oh, you know, thanks. my parents said, uh, no allowance, we just allow you to live here. <laughs> hey, Do that's the chores, <laughs> and we'll allow you to live here. Uh, and that's so. a good point, that really is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so do your chores is, is a practical challenge. Another, uh, by the way, parents, that means that you need to give them chores to do. I know it may be easier for you just to do it all. You may make you feel like you're a you know, super mom or super dad or whatever, but uh, your kids need to learn responsibilities, and chores is a great way of doing that. Um, another practical tip for practicing self-control, try this one out. Don't yell at your spouse or your kids for the next week. They don't yell at your spouse or your kids. I mean, unless they're about to run into the street and get hit by a car, there probably isn't a great reason to yell at them. Don't yell at them. I, I mean, come on. Communication is essential to relationships, and, and we want to have close relationships. We want to have intimate relationships. We want to have relationships of trust and encouragement. So let your words be kind. Let them be encouraging. And if you need to discipline, you still do that. You just don't need to yell. Besides, the quiet voice is scarier anyway. Uh, Understand, if, if we're yelling, we're just letting the uh, impulses, the feelings, the anger uh, just kind of vomit out on everybody around us. There isn't a point to it that's redemptive. So I, I just want to challenge you uh, for the next seven days, uh, don't yell at your spouse, don't yell at your kids. Kids, don't yell at your parents. Uh, let's treat each other with verbal respect. And, and let's just, just to be clear, at the end of seven days, if you've succeeded, that means that you're practicing self-control. Keep doing it. Last night, somebody actually saw me afterwards and said, six and a half more days until I can yell again. <laughs> That's not the point here. The point is to practice self-control so you can improve the relationships so they get better. So try not to yell at uh, your children or your spouse for the next uh, week. Children, again, you're totally going to love me here, but doing your homework right away is a good form of self-control. Um, how do you guys feel about homework? Any thoughts? No? <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. Big thumbs down. I know, I know the feeling. I didn't like it so much either. But getting homework done right away can help you practice self-control. And parents, we might need to help them with this. Maybe get a box and put everything that your kids totally love or are addicted to possibly, <laughs> like electronics, drawing, whatever they really love, put their stuff in a box until they get their homework done. And they're not going to like it, but I can guarantee they're going to get it done. And then children, you'll have more time to play once you get that done right away without delay. And speaking of electronics, uh, adults, I'm going to challenge you to put your phones down, your tablets down, turn the TV off, and talk to your kids. Talk to each other. 
and uh, the electronics are such a distraction. And, and when your kids are there, I mean, by the way, I, I know it may seem like it takes an eternity to get through the week, but they'll be gone before you know it. So put the phones down and have a conversation. Maybe you need the box for the electronics at the dinner table so that you guys can actually eat and talk together. Maybe you need to just go ahead and has a, have a family non-electronic night and, and just go, hey, we're not going to turn on any of the electronics. We're going to play board games, B-O-A-R-D, not the other way. Uh, board games, we're going to... We're going to talk to each other. Maybe we're going to go for a walk. We're going to go to the park. We're, we're going to have conversation as a family because it's so easy to get distracted by the electronics and, and just to ignore the people who are right there. And, and as you get older and you become empty nesters, it's really easy. You can live with somebody and never talk to them because you just shoot them a text if you want something, right? <laughs> See, that, that's destructive habits. So we're in relationship. Let's redeem the time. Let's turn the electronics off and let's have a conversation with our children because how else are you going to teach them what's important mm -hmm. children obeying your parents is also a really great way to practice self-control and obeying them right away and i know you have this internal battle of but they're not right i'm right but the fact is you need to obey them not because they are right but because they've been wrong oh, way oh. more than you have <laughs> they have had more of those experiences so they can help you and guys, I'm serious. They have messed up a lot. And they can actually be honest with you about that, but that helps you listen to them more because they can show you what not to do. <laughs> okay. Adults, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you, maybe step on some toes at this point. Because uh, we talked about it earlier uh, when I mentioned about get, you know, being stupid and getting drunk. Uh, some of you need to set a limit on your uh, alcohol intake. And you know that's a place where you struggle with self-control. And I know you guys are uh, sitting there going, oh, I thought we were in a Baptist church. We're not going to talk about this stuff. Uh, <laughs> truth is, the Bible doesn't condemn consumption of alcohol. But it absolutely forbids drunkenness. The Apostle Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. A and, uh, you know, some of you are, are able to, you know, uh, drink and control it. And some of you aren't. And you know who you are. So if that's an issue that you have, then talk to your, your spouse, talk to your friends and say, here's my limit and uh, remind me, hold me accountable at that point. And then when they remind you that you've had your limit, don't yell at them. We already talked about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and honestly, if that irritates you so much that you hit your limit and you don't, don't want to go past it, you don't want to stop, you probably need to stop drinking. I, I mean, I've had friends that destroyed their relationship they were great wonderful loving people when they were sober and whenever they started drinking they just fought and their marriage ended and and so if you see that destructive pattern in your life then then address it set a limit a hard limit that you're going to live by or just stop completely there's a reason that we have a recovery ministry here at, at calvary because a lot of us uh you know whether it's alcohol or whether it's legal drugs or whether it's illegal drugs um, we really are not in control. And, and as the Apostle Paul put it, it's better to be controlled by the Holy Spirit than it is to be controlled by some substance that leads to destruction. And, and we're not afraid to talk about it because there's a lot of people in this church that have celebrated recovery and will walk with you on that journey if that's what you need. But that's a point of self-control that a lot of people struggle with. And, and so I just want to encourage you to either set a limit that you're going to live by or just stop drinking completely okay children i have one more little piece of advice a practical tip for you to practice self-control and it's called respecting your teachers and this is family-wide too all the teachers are like thank you <laughs> respecting them is absolutely a win in your life because they know what they're doing that means instead of saying um excuse me teacher why am i supposed to learn algebra am i really going to use this when i grow up Instead of distress, he said, nope. <laughs> Actually, there's a reason. You can have a conversation with them and say, I'm having a hard time understanding how I'm going to use this. Could you explain to me? Because I might learn it better. And then they can tell you the reasons. Hey, Miss Julie, yeah. why do we need to know algebra when we grow <laughs> I up? I have a feeling you're going to ask me that. <laughs> it teaches you critical thinking skills, guys. It also helps you pass your college algebra when you get there and so you don't have to retake it two times, which I also know from experience, actually. Oh, so you took college algebra three times? Thank you. So learning yep. algebra in <laughs> high school saves money later in that as an adult. That is a good point. It really does. <laughs> okay. Time and money. <laughs> hey, uh, adults, one more uh, challenge for you in terms of practicing self-control. 
How about discussing significant purchases with your spouse before you buy? You know, don't just drive up in a new car and say, hey, look what I got. You know, or look what we're going to be traveling the country in. or Look what we're going to be living in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's that's not wise. And so you might want to talk with your spouse before significant purchases. And, And here's the thing. Some of you are married to somebody who's just as much an impulse buyer as you are. And if that's the case, if there's two impulse buyers, you know, living in under the same roof, then you do probably need to agree on a limit. And, and anything over that limit, you guys are going to sleep on for 24 hours. You're going to just go, we're not going to spend more than $200 at one time unless it's, uh, we, we wait 24 hours. Maybe talk to some people about the wisdom of that purchase uh, just to protect ourselves. That way, when you're in the showroom or something and they're going like, this deal expires today, you go, oh, I can sleep on it. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, that way you're not going to end up in that place of regret buyer's remorse going why did we do that we don't have the money uh, so talk about it with your spouse before you buy okay so we're going to wrap up this self-control by checking on your wrappers children some of you are given candy wrappers and bags of special lights check on your self-control right now to see if you picked those up and put them away and didn't just say here mom take these (laughs) um also, you do have homework. Oh, actually fun homework. In your, in your bulletin, you were given life notes and questions that you can have, that you can, conversations you can have with your family, with your life groups are really great, and it will help take this home today. Yeah, and those questions are, are for, if you're in a life group, do them in a life group. If you have kids at home, do them with the kids at home. If you don't, still do them. As a couple or with your friends over lunch, uh, it, it's an exercise of reflection and seeing where you are with God in your self-control. Because we want to win in life. All of us want to win in life. And here's the thing, God wants us to win in life. That's why he's trying to teach you self-control. That's why the Holy Spirit is in you, trying to develop the character of Christ in your life, because that will lead you to victory. The question is, are we willing to practice self-control? Let's pray.